reading from section 90 in the Doctrine and Covenants. Verily, thus saith the Lord, it shall come to pass that every soul who forsaketh his sins and cometh unto me and calleth on my name and obeyeth my voice and keepeth my commandments shall see my face and know that I am and that I am the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. The Father because he gave me of his fullness, and the Son because I was in the world and made flesh my tabernacle and dwelt among the sons of men. 1 Corinthians. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Reading from section 39 in the Doctrine and Covenants. Hearken and listen to the voice of him who is from all eternity to all eternity, the great I am, even Jesus Christ, the light and the life of the world, a light which shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not, the same which came in the meridian of time unto my own, and my own received me not. But as to as many as received me, gave I power to become my sons. And even so will I give unto as many will receive me power to become my sons. And verily, verily, I say unto thee, he that receiveth my gospel receiveth me. And he that receiveth not my gospel receiveth not me. And this is my gospel. Repentance and baptism by water. And then cometh the baptism of fire in the Holy Ghost, even the Comforter, which showeth all things and teacheth the, teacheth the peaceable things of the kingdom. Also reading from Mosiah. But if he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit and putteth off the natural man and become a saint, through the atonement of Christ the Lord, and becometh as a child, submissive, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child does submit to his father. And lastly, I'd like to read from John. 14th chapter, the 6th and 7th verse. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him. And you have seen him. The significance of the sacrament cannot be fully understood by the natural man. Once again from 1 Corinthians. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper, properly understood and engaged in, enables the Lord to give himself to us 
Otherwise, we remain lifeless. What determines the spiritual value of this symbolic action is that we do what he did. He laid his life down. The sacrament is not only a physical response to our covenant relationship with Jesus, it is a remembrance that we have the opportunity to once again be in the presence of the Father because of Jesus' act of love for all creation. And Arthur Oakman's meditations upon resurrection and eternal life, he shared, In the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, there is a parting of the veil. Here we enter into the Holy of Holies. The veil of the temple is the darkness of mind, resident in the bodies of men, temples of God. Consequenced by sin that the veil is rent for us when in utter silence we come to the table of the Lord and see displayed obedient humanity broken in sacrificial love. The natural man believes in the process of justification, not sanctification. The natural man believes in exclusiveness, not inclusiveness. The natural man believes in self, not in selflessness. It was just a couple of weeks ago that Brother David shared with us that we do not own the exclusive rights to the gospel. For Jesus came to share the gospel law with all creation, that all men might be saved. Brother Sam shared with us that the great love of, of Jesus and that those that had eyes to see and ears to hear to understand what it is to be in the spirit of preparation. Brother Aaron Dodd shared with us on a recent Sunday evening that what rules our time and our lives is our master. Brother Jason shared with us to consider two questions which I would like to, to ask this morning in our preparation. What do we need to bring to the cross seeking God's forgiveness? What do we need to bring to the cross seeking his power to forgive? In Matthew 16, verses 25 and 26, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And now for a man to take up his cross is to deny himself, put off the natural man. To deny himself of all ungodliness and every worldly lust and keep my commandments. Reading in section 17 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verses 22a, 23b. It is expedient that the church meet together often to partake of bread and wine in remembrance of the Lord Jesus. And the elder or priest shall administer it, and after this manner shall he administer it. He shall kneel with the church and call upon the Father in solemn prayer, saying, O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son. And witness unto thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always... Remember him and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen.
The manner of administering the wine, he shall take the cup also and say, O God, the eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them. That they may witness unto thee, O God, the eternal Father, that they do always remember him that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Obviously, I just read the passages in Scripture containing the prayers of the blessing of the bread and the wine. I shared them because of their significance today and the thoughts that I wanted to share with you. trip that, that I took with other members of the congregation to Kirtland last summer. As a group, we made special preparation that there was a sense of urgency for me to make some extra preparation. It seems like only a blink of an eye that it was several years before that at the age of 16 that I had turned down the opportunity to travel to Kirtland with the priesthood. It had bothered me for a very long time. And in this opportunity, trying to seek out the Lord and why I was fitted for this time, what my part and my place was, trying to understand his will in my life, because for a period of time I stepped away from being fully engaged, listening to the natural man, throwing myself into work and to family, doing part to some of the burdens in life, But mostly, is the natural's man, natural man's way of saying, I'll do it my way. And as we traveled to Kirtland, and it was a wonderful experience, I had read of the experiences of, of other priesthood members that had prepared and traveled to Kirtland. I guess you could say I was seeking a mountaintop experience. And on the final day of, of our trip to Kirtland, during the service before, uh, the service of preparation before the sacrament service, I received my answer. During that service, it was impressed upon me that when I read the prayer over the bread, that I needed to emphasize the word always. And not just for those that were there, but especially for myself. In a few moments, you will hear the prayer of, of blessing offered over the bread and the wine. What do we bring to the cross this day? Seeking God's forgiveness. Brother Joseph shared at our last communion service that our focus should be on Jesus Christ. To reflect upon what the priorities are were in our lives. I join with my brothers in asking that we come this morning in the spirit of repentance. I come and join with my brothers in unity and ask that we come in remembrance, in love, 
the art of genuine love and humility one for one for another. That as we do this in remembrance of him, Jesus, that we would always remember him, that we might always have his spirit to be with us, is my prayer.